Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome back to the studio. I am super excited for 2024 and everything that it has in store. A lot of new music coming out, and I have a few other announcements that are going to come out in the coming months, too, but I'm really excited about it. I'm also toying with bringing back the console side chat live stream. So if anybody's interested in that, let me know because I'm thinking about bringing it back. I kind of miss the live streams and being able to talk with everyone in real time and just hang out and talk about recording and whatnot. So let me know if you're interested in that. 2023, I started out with a like a studio tour kind of studio walkthrough, if you will. And I thought beginning of 2024, it would be appropriate to do an updated one of those because a lot has changed here in the last year. And I'd just like to share some of that with you, including the all new mute button coffee mug. This button stays engaged until coffee reaches this line. And then if people are still talking your ear out during your morning coffee, just fill the cup back up. Mutes everybody. I wish it worked that way. It doesn't, but that would be pretty bitching if it did. Right, Delilah? Right? She agrees too. Okay, let's take a look. So I'm up in the front. This is the lounge area. I've got a couple really comfortable couch, chair, you know, all the amenities, the all important coffee machine. Gotta have that. And then off here, Behind me, there's a small patio outside where people can get outside a little fresh air, or I can banish people from the control room if they're simply being too noisy while we're having a session. Control room. I would say the biggest update that happened this last year is the addition of the Atom A8H monitors and the Aventones Mix Cubes. Thank you, Zounds. Love them. I did a couple videos about the Atom speakers uh, as well as the Atom with the Sonar Works. So I'll put some links in the description to go check that out. Really happy with how, how they've worked out and how my mixes and everything are translating now. Also building some new DIY RE stuff. Well, these three I've had for a while, but in this unit, I have three new color modules that I'm trying out. I also finally built my first OLA5 compressor. And I have another one of those back on the bench in the back that we'll get to in a second. But so far, I've only had it for a couple days, or I just finished building it a few days ago. Really loving how it sounds. And the build was quite nice too. Guitar pedals. This is uh, probably one of my biggest investments over the last year was the amount of extra or new guitar pedals I have. So this is my guitar pedal mix station. I have a pair of radial units here, a mono ecstasy and a stereo ecstasy on the side. I have a power supply just mounted here on the side of the rack. Makes it easy to plug and play whatever guitar chain I want. And a lot of the times I just line them up over here next to the Fostex and I just go to town picking whatever uh, guitar pedals I want to use. Let's see, I'll, let's get a panorama here. So this is the control room in its current state right now. That back wall got redone this is this panels are all entirely new at the beginning of the year oh new couch considerably bigger and way more comfortable than the last one which is uh really really important now one of the biggest things i think for me and connectivity is a big deal for me making uh sessions run smooth and also just being able to get sounds where you need them. So if you've seen any of the other videos that I've walked through the studio, you may already know that I have a whole tie line system here. These go between all the rooms. There's stereo loops, mono loops, and then there's speaker lines uh, for guitar cabs. So we could have a head in the control room, we could have a guitar cab out in the live room, we can separate them. But I also added eight combo jacks, and I think I'm gonna add eight more. These go directly to this patch bay up here. And that has been really handy for when we rent some gear or someone brings uh, compressors or EQs or even mic pre's and we can easily just patch right into those combo jacks, comes out on the patch bay and I can send that wherever I need to send it, and send the audio that is. Picked up a new PV base, well not new, new to us. This base sounds fantastic. We've been doing all our bass recording with this over the past uh, probably two months now and plays great sounds great in love with that bass iso booth 
One thing I've been doing lately is actually using the ISO booth as a vocal booth. Uh, there's been so many sessions happening at the same time or different, session, different sessions day to day that I've just decided to leave a lot of gear up or as much gear as I can possibly leave up and maybe I just have to patch one or two things to get a session going. So I've kind of made the ISO booth here my vocal booth as of late. So I have a Roswell Pro Audio Colaris, headphones, and down here I'm running it into a splitter. This is something I'll get to more later. If you've seen the songs from the studio with Sophia, the Love Unselfishly, you'll see that I commonly split my vocal channel into two channels. So one mic, two channels, treated differently. I started doing three channels in the last couple months and I've been experimenting. So I picked up another splitter. This is a one to three splitter that I got from Zounds. It's an ART, the S8. And I've been really happy with how that's been working. And the vocals have also liked it too because we kind of get finished sounding, almost completely finished sounding vocals in the headphones, which in turn makes the performances better. I'll do a full video on that at some point though. I definitely want to share that because I think it's, it's fun. The panel here, lots of connectivity. I have six, actually seven XLR jacks, ethernet for headphones, all the speaker lines. Then there's two mono loops that go between all the rooms. And then I have two that go directly to the patch bay in the control room. Again, easy and fast to send audio everywhere. The live room. This is probably where the majority of the changes have happened in the last couple of years. This whole room is basically redone completely. So first, I have pretty much committed to the drums in the corner. I do like how they sound. I like how they open up in the room. Uh, it's also convenient when I have big sessions because you can see with the drums in the corner, there's plenty of room around here to have other members of the band. And I do do a lot of live tracking. So I, not that I would put the drums purposely somewhere only to have space, but I do like the way they sound in the corner. This set's been up for a while too. Been loving the Roswell Pro Audio Aztecs for the overheads. Oh, and one thing I've been doing on the toms lately again. Thank you, Mario McNulty. Top and bottom miking, and I've been using a Mic Parts S25 on the top and Audio Technica ATM2, I think 230 on the bottom. Oh man, these tom sounds have been killer. Really nice. And this has kind of stayed up in one, you know, various configurations of this so I can quickly track drums if I need to, and unless we need to set up a whole other kit. And as you can see here, I've got an organ set up because I've been tracking organ the last couple days. This is an M3. I see it has the old speaker down there that is no longer hooked up. This organ has been modded to be used with guitar amps. Sounds killer through a Marshall. But right now I'm actually running a stereo setup and I'm using the Electroharmonics Lester K to do that. And it sounds really cool. This was for some layering with guitars to create some depth in some guitar riffs which I am going to do a video on that because I think it came out pretty cool, so I will do that. But this organ gets used a lot and used a lot with different pedals, which makes it a lot of fun. Tower O snares, a little bit of everything. And they all sound good. I mean, I think some of the classics that get used a lot, the LM402, 6.5x14 Black Beauty, 8x14 Black Beauty, but this one I put die cast top and bottom. Let's see, a few other faves I really dig. The raw copper, this is a great snare. And so is the classic oak from Ludwig. Really cool snare. And then you can't go wrong with acrylites, but if you want that cross stick, oh, the Yamaha Anton Fig, this is one of the most beautiful cross sticks. It's a good sounding snare, but the cross stick especially is great. And then speaking of, or coming back to the guitar pedals, I have guitar pedal row. This is growing. Ooh, this is a fun one. The rainbow machine. Thanks, Michael and Manuel. But this, I'm actually almost out of space over here. I'm gonna have to build another shelf. Because guitar pedals are fun, man. Being a drummer for my entire career, all the guitar players, you guys had all the fun stuff. 
Black Star Head, this is a new addition. And this I've kind of left set up as, this has been a guitar area. I don't have a mic up on it at the moment, but I've, this has been up for a while. So I can kind of move station to station. And even the bass, I'll just roll out from the wall a little bit. Oh, this is also new, the Ampeg SVT cab. Absolutely love how this sounds. The head, that's uh, my buddy Minnows who leaves it here. This is a good sounding rig. Great sounding rig, actually. And that is, that's kind of the live room. It's been, oh, the tower of room mics. It's been a typical session, or a setup, sorry, typical setup that I've been using lately. Mono mic on the bottom, that's a Proto Roswell at the moment. Then a stereo Audio-Technica, the 4050 ST, and a pair of Audio-Technica AT4080s. Talk about some flexibility right there. You can do a lot with those mics. You can really change how the drums feel in the room. Back ISO. This mainly gets used for guitars and bass because it's large. There's, a, there's easily enough room here to put amps side by side, put a couple gobos in here, and I don't really have bleed issues. Bass sounds good back here, but I have done percussion and even upright bass. So this panel at the moment only has four mic lines, but that's gonna go to eight because I'm gonna start doing some drums. But I also have, besides the normal tie lines and speaker lines, I have HDMI in the wall, and that allows me to have a monitor and a camera on each side. So if I actually have a person back here, as opposed to having windows, because I don't have that kind of line of sight, I just put up a GoPro and a monitor on both sides. Everybody can see each other easily. Single talkback mic and bam, everybody can talk. But I'm gonna do a bit of an update to this, this room this year, and it might actually change my connectivity a little bit, so I will do an update when that comes out. Then back here on the other side of the curtain, drums, baby. Here, let me get back over here. This is all my drum storage. So where all the extras stay. I've got some more snares right here, tons of heads. I mean, I'm actually kind of running low. I've got all the extra hardware, hi-hat stands, snare stands, cymbal stands. I have multiple bass drum pedals, all that can get used. And this is where all of that stuff stays back here. And then on the other side of this room, let me spin around. This is my new workstation that is a work in progress. This wall is gonna get finished with some shelves and some wood so I can better organize everything so it's not just sitting on the table. But you can see I'm working on, or getting ready to start my second OLA-5. Really excited about that. And that's, that's, oh, there's some gobos. Got some four footers, six footers. Oh, and this cool gobo. There's a gigantum reel that I did that I used this, this particular gobo. And this is cool, because if you can see it from the side here, it actually has a hinge here and this side comes up and it's about a four foot by four foot plexi window that's really thick. It's great in here if we have a vocalist and we need to block out some drums because I can pull it up. You got the plexi so you have line of sight, real easy to see everything. It blocks out some of the direct sound into the mic and we do a lot of live vocals while we're tracking that way. And that's it. Delilah's got her ISO booth. She likes to lay right there. But that's, that's the updates to the studio. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm looking forward to 2024. Let me know if you are all interested in some of the console side chats again, because I would love to fire that back up and do some more of that. And in the meantime, thanks for joining me on this video. Happy New Year. Let's make 2024 rock, people. Make some music. See you in the next video.